David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, today I have a bit of a grab bag for you. What I'm going to do in this Q&A is uh, give a brief overview of the recent Atlanta Pen Show. I'll answer a few questions folks have submitted, uh, and then we'll have a bit of mail time where I share some of the letters I've received over the last month or so. Um, it's been a while since my last Q&A, so I have quite a few letters. I'll, I, I think I'll have to split them up over a couple of Q&As. Uh, to begin with, this past week was the Atlanta Pen Show. Uh, now, I've done full recap videos on several shows previously, so this will be more of a pared-down version of a recap. Sometimes pen show recaps can get a little bit repetitive, so uh, I, I think I need to figure out something a little different to do for the Triangle Pen Show coming up in a little over a month. I'll see what I can come up with. Uh, last year was my first time attending the Atlanta show, and I had a fantastic time. Uh, it's a medium-sized show that feels larger. Uh, attendance is great, and a large number of content creators were in attendance. Uh, it was really great to hang out with everybody. Uh, the scene around the bar was great every night. Folks basically were there every night until the hotel staff kicked everyone out. Uh, lots of viewers stopped me to say hi. Uh, you know, I really enjoy meeting folks and uh, learning a little bit about you. Oh, um, I met one gentleman by the name of Bill who gave me this coin. Uh, that It's a Canadian $5 coin and on one side is Queen Elizabeth. Uh, and what's special about it is that on the back, nestled under the maple leaf, is a privy mark of Bigfoot. Uh, you know, I really appreciate that uh, Bill thought enough of me to uh, buy this and then give it to me. Uh, I appreciate that, Bill. Uh, let's see, I also picked up some notebooks from Stiflexible. Uh, and then here is something from Story Supply that's pretty cool. These are pocket notebooks which have a theme based on a book. This particular set is inspired by Homer's Odyssey. Story Supply plans to come out with new limited edition notebooks each quarter based on a new book. It's a pretty novel idea. I guess that's a bad pun. <laughs> uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing what their next book inspiration will be. Um, oh, and then finally, I have some very interesting note cards from Bittner. Um, the printing technique that's used on these cards is fascinating. Uh, I sat down with Detlef Bittner at the show and he told me all about the process and I found it really interesting. So uh, look for more details and reviews coming for each of those items in the somewhat near future. Um, the highlights, or one of the highlights of the show was the live taping of the Pen Attic podcast. Uh, the turnout was great. Uh, they even handed out these pen attic bingo cards for folks to play along with during the show. And if you heard the show, you know that someone in fact did get to call out bingo during the show. Uh, I was close. I, uh, I just needed someone to fawn over a color combo or someone to say, there's a podcast about pens. Uh, but uh, that was something really fun to add to the show. Uh, it, it was funny because uh, something would happen in the show and you would see half the crowd hurriedly look down and cross something off their card. Uh, you know, for the first time, I actually went to the show without a shopping list. Um, there was nothing that I, I really felt that I needed, but I did keep an eye out and ended up picking up a couple of things. So I, I didn't leave empty handed. Uh, from Papier Plume, which was kind of neat because they give it to you in this little pouch. I picked up a wax seal with a D on it, uh, as well as a couple of different waxes. Uh, I'm kind of getting into the wax seal thing. They're kind of fun. Uh, you know, I, I did spend too much time around Andy Lambrose's table, and he, uh, he did talk me into buying a pen. Now, Andy does hold the distinction of the only person to really talk me into purchasing a pen, which he has done a couple of times. I typically can't be swayed by a salesperson. You know, I pretty much know whether I want to purchase something or not. But uh, uh, Andy made me a deal I couldn't refuse in regard to a pen he has coming out later this year. Uh, I can't really discuss it now, but I look forward to receiving it in the August-September time frame and will definitely be sharing it with you once I have it in my hands. Uh, I spent some time with Jonathan Brooks and his wife Shay. Uh, it was funny because Jonathan sold out of most of his amazing stock very early. So he had to have people pull up his website on their phones in order to show them examples of his work. He's been doing some amazing Arushi work lately. Uh, the chances are very good that you will be hearing more about his Arushi work on this channel in the near future. 
there were a number of great nib grinders in attendance. Uh, I never once walked past any of them and saw them just sitting there. From what I saw, everyone was pretty booked up for the entire weekend. The pay it forward table was going strong. I hung out around that table for a while and it was funny to hear some of the folks manning the table having to explain the concept. Yes, it is free. Yes, take whatever you want. Uh, there was one young lady, lady who were in, was in her teens uh, that was just getting started in pens and was really torn. Uh, she wanted to, to take something but was really apprehensive because she didn't have anything to give. And she really had to be convinced that this table was for people exactly like her, new to the hobby. Uh, she ended up taking a bottle of uh, Pe Pelican Edelstein. I think it was the uh, Adventurine, the green, uh, as well as a pen. Uh, I did acquire another Ryan Crusack pen. This one is the Legend 15 in Honduras Rosewood. Uh, Ryan works with some uh, um, very interesting exotic woods. Now, actually, I don't know how exotic Honduras rosewood is, but I like it. Uh, that Ryan's wife and his girls were at the pen show as well. Uh, his daughters were selling their jewelry and their pen sleeves. Uh, his oldest daughter, Zoe, is working to raise money for a humanitarian trip she's taking later this year to Malawi, Africa. Uh, they were raffling off a, a nice prize of their custom jewelry in order to raise money for the trip. But rather than hear about her trip from me, I'll let Zoe tell you about it herself. My name is Zoe Krusak and I will be going to Malawi, Africa this year to build chicken coops, make irrigated garden beds, and drill wells. I'm going with a team of 20 teenagers from June 16 to August 3rd. Please, su please help support me as I go overseas to bring clean water to the local orphanages. Thank you. So, if you would care to contribute to her trip, there is a link below in the notes where you can go. Uh, you can click on the link and then enter the number that will be in the notes as well, so your donation goes directly towards offsetting the cost of Zoe's trip. Uh, my parents have gone over to Tanzania twice on humanitarian trips, uh, and they found them to be uh, extremely hard work, but very fulfilling and rewarding. Uh, I'd, I'd actually like to do that sometime myself. Uh, oh, on a side note, uh, in a couple of weeks, I will be traveling back home to San Diego for a few days. Uh, my grandfather is turning 100. So everyone in the family is getting together for a huge birthday party. Uh, I haven't been back home in about a year, so I'm looking forward to seeing everyone and uh, hanging out with Grandpa. Uh, on one of the days I was out there, I, I wanted to run around town and see a bunch of my favorite uh, places and hit a couple of favorite restaurants. So who knows, maybe I'll do uh, like a travel vlog or something like that about my trip. Uh, oh, uh, Crystal Azer, otherwise known as uh, Squishy Ink, the creator of the Hippo Noto notebooks, was in attendance. Uh, the ivory version of the notebooks has begun to ship, and I happen to have one of them right here. Uh, that Crystal mentioned a number of folks wanted to see really see the difference between the ivory and the cream paper, which was uh, available in the previous version of the notebook. So this is what the ivory looks like. Well, let's see if I can actually do this without cutting off the mic. So here is what the ivory looks like, and then here is what the cream looks like. Uh, and you can see the difference here. The ivory is much more white, and the cream is much more yellow. Uh, Coming up somewhere in the near future, um, I'll actually have a follow-up review revisiting the Hippo Noto to go over how I feel about it if I've been using one for a few months. I'm about 100 pages into it. Uh, and then I'll show the differences uh, between the older and newer versions. Uh, and I might even be taking a look at uh, her custom Robert Oster and KWZ inks as well. Uh, Crystal's told me that she's working very hard to ship out all of the orders for the Ivory Notebooks. So if you haven't received yours yet, expect it soon. Uh, I know that she appreciates your patience and she's sipping, er, shipping everything out as quickly as possible. By the end of the weekend, I felt the same about the Atlanta show as I did last year. I walked away with the feeling that it was a show that I couldn't miss. Uh, if I didn't attend it in the future, I'd feel like I was missing out on something. And that's not a feeling you get at every show. I, I really look forward to attending next year. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the Q&A portion of this video. Um, I received a large number of great questions from folks and I wanted to uh, get to a couple of them here. Uh, Darren asked, 
uh, with a collection as broad as yours and as with as many nicer pens that you have, um, why do you continue using steel nibbed pens? Do you just like the way they write? Is it a convenience thing? Uh, I don't own anything with a gold nib yet, but it seems like if I did, then steel nibbed pens would eventually go by the wayside. Well, Darren, I, I can understand the appeal of gold nib pens. I mean, if you could write with gold, then why ever go back to steel? But believe it or not, there are some fantastic pens out there with steel nibs. Uh, you know, maybe sometime I should do a top 10 list of my favorite steel nib pens. That might be interesting to take a look at. But yes, there is a lot of great pens with steel nibs. Uh, the uh, Diplomat Arrow is one. Uh, this is their new version called the uh, Factory. Uh, I really love the Arrow, but this uh, is a new version and they've made some improvements to this pen which are very nice. Um, I will be reviewing this pen coming up in the near future as well and giving this one away courtesy of uh, Points of Distinction. So uh, be on the lookout for that. But uh, Diplomat's steel nibs are outstanding. Um, another uh, excellent steel nib can be found on another new pen, which is this Montegrappa Monte Grappa. So yes, I know that sounds a bit funny, uh, and I'll get to it during my upcoming review, but the nib on this pen is outstanding as well. Uh, and finally, another pen that has a very nice steel nib uh, is this Twisby VAC 700. I mean, this is a $65 pen, uh, but the steel nib is very nice. So, Darren, when you finally pick up a pen with a gold nib, uh, you know, it might be fantastic. Uh, but I think that you'll find that steel nibs can still provide a really great writing experience and are going to have a place in your collection. Uh, I have a long list of pens with steel nibs that I really enjoy using. Uh, okay, the next question is from uh, Geocom13, which is, what is your favorite style of pen case for carrying a few pens to and from work? Um, my EDC pen case is this. Uh, it is leather. It's a four pen case from Watcher. Um, I, I really like this case. I have a number of them and uh, this is just the one that I've been using lately or a number of different cases from a number of different manufacturers. Um, uh, it is uh, not too big, but it's still able to hold virtually any pen in my collection. Um, I have one or two that it won't fit. Um, what I like about it is it holds four pens. There is a little sleeve in here that can hold a pocket notebook like this one here from Story Supply. Uh, I take a different pen to work with me each weekday. So over the weekend, I get together my pens for the week. Uh, I make sure that they're cleaned and inked. Uh, and then I actually make a little note here about what pens and then what ink are in them. Uh, and then I, I put them on Instagram each day if you want to subscribe to me there at Figboot11. Uh, there are five work days in the week, but only four slots. So I put my, uh, my Monday pen in my shirt pocket, or sometimes I clip it in there. But then at the end of each day, the pen that, uh, that of the day gets put away. So as the week progresses, there's fewer and fewer pens in here. Um, these are actually my pens for next week. So uh, what we have here is we have the aforementioned Ryan Crusack Legend 15. Uh, then we have a... Sailor King of Pen Ebonite. Then we have a Platinum 3776 Yamanaka. Uh, and a Pilot uh, 743 with a FA nib. Uh, and then finally, we have a Stainless Steel Lamy 2000. So those are my pens for this upcoming week. Uh, but yeah, I feel that this case really works for me. Okay, next question is from Hobbies Girl, uh, who says, who says uh, or asks, what is your favorite Studio uh, Ghibli film? Uh, and you know, it's really hard to pick only one. Uh, Miyazaki is just a fantastic uh, director uh, and that there are so many great films. Um, I'm gonna cheat and actually give you a top three. In no particular order, my favorites are Spirited Away, my Neighbor Totoro, and Howl's Moving, Moving Castle. Um, you know, I think Kiki's Delivery Service is underrated as well, so I guess that was four, but they're all just awesome. Uh, next question uh, from Tyler is, in what opinion, or in your opinion, what is your most durable pen? I work outside in the oil field and have broken some pens when leaning on equipment to repair it. 
Well, Tyler, if you're looking for durability, then there's things like this, which is a uh, like a Schrade tactical pen, which is very durable. But also, I would look at just about anything from the Keras Pen Company. Here is the copper version of their ink. Uh, now, I wouldn't say that this pen is a good pen for everyday use because it is insanely heavy. It's the heaviest pen in my collection. But it writes great, and it's virtually indestructible. Um, some of their aluminum models of the ink, as well as the Fortune K, or the Fountain K, excuse me, uh, are still extraordinarily solid and durable. Uh, it will take a lot more than just leaning up against some equipment to damage one of these pens. Uh, and then finally, for the last question, Naomi asked, what is your Grail pen? Uh, Naomi, uh, that I, I said it before in a previous Q&A, but right now I'd have to consider my Grail pen to be the Mont Blanc Alfred Hitchcock. Uh, I'm a big movie fan and a big Hitchcock buff, and I love pens with symbolism. Uh, the pen has tons of it. Uh, the clip references, the knife in the film Psycho, and the barrel design is meant to create a special effect rem reminiscent of Hitchcock's famous vertigo effect. And take a look at this nib. I just love how they incorporated the silhouette. Uh, they're hard to find, but obtainable. Uh, they come up for sale every so often, but I, I really can't see myself picking one of these up. Uh, the reason being is price. Uh, these retail for around $3,000, which is a lot of money for a pen. Uh, it'd be over twice as much as I'd ever spent on a pen before, so I, I really can't justify that. So yes, unless a pile of money lands on my doorstep, then I, I don't foresee owning one of these anytime soon, but I think it's cool. Um, I did have an opportunity to hold one at a Montblanc store a couple of years ago. Um, I, it was a bit heavy and it did feel a bit odd in the hand, but if I recall, um, uh, but I would still take it. Uh, it's just something that I, I think is really special. So now it's time for mail time. Um, it's been a while since my last Q&A and I received lots of letters in February for Inco Rymo. Uh, first of all, from Ryan, I received this very nice whoops, Game of Thrones stationery set. Um, inside it has a, uh, a notebook and some stationery, but then one of the cool things is here is it had a wax seal of a dire wolf, the sigil of House Stark, uh, as well as some wax. Uh, I had wanted to uh, get a wax seal for a while, uh, and so I appreciate this gift. Uh, and that uh, I had made a commitment that if you write me, I will write back, and lately each letter has uh, one of those wax seals on it. Um, I think it's pretty cool. So thank you very much, Brian. I appreciate the gift. Uh, in regards to some letters, um, I was on the BYOB Pen Club podcast, and one of the hosts, Evgeny, sent me a letter. Um, it was uh, interesting because he basically uh, wrote a, uh, a letter during the show, and it was basically a runny commentary of his thoughts as the show was progressing. Um, I had a lot of fun on the show. If you haven't listened to the BYOB uh, podcast before, uh, that it's worth a listen. Uh, next up is a letter from uh, Dean Rat, who had some really nice uh, print handwriting. And then on the back of his envelope, appropriately, appropriately enough, he drew a little rat. Um, oh, this was kind of cool. Um, this letter is from uh, Orsi, who lives in Hungary. And sh what she did was she had a little, nice little postcard. And then on the back, she drew a little Rubik's Cube with pen and watercolor. Um, what really impressed me was that Orsi must have had a, uh, a cube or, or referenced a picture of a cube because all of the colors of the tiles are correct here. Um, and what I mean by that is, um, well, here, let me show you. Um, if one side of the cube is white uh, the, and the opposite side is yellow, you will never have any white yellow pieces, just like there's a white blue piece right here. Uh, and having so would be kind of a mistake. And there's no mistakes on here at all. So I like that on this piece of art. I love it. Thanks a lot. Um, I received a, a nice letter from uh, Roy, uh, who is otherwise known as Penboy Roy, who has been making some pen videos of his own lately. If you haven't checked out his uh, pen videos, that he has a, a different take on things, uh, and so they're uh, they're interesting to watch. 
Um, I have a letter here from, uh, from Barbara, who is an American who now lives in New Zealand. Um, and she had some nice handwriting there. And Barbara wondered if I do more how-to videos. Now, that's not something I've uh, uh, delved into that much of, but I appreciate the suggestion. Who knows? Uh, I'm trying to mix in a variety of video topics, so maybe a, a how-to video might sneak its way in sometime. And from close to New Zealand, I have something here from Alistar, who lives in Australia. Uh, he wrote this with a, I believe it was, yes, a Visconti Homo sapiens with an extra fine nib and Mont Blanc UNICEF blue ink. Um, I like that when people write letters with fountain pens, they often say what pen and ink they're using. I think that's neat. Uh, speaking of ink, I have a nice letter here from Daniel, uh, who is from the Netherlands. And he tells me a nice story about how he went into a small bookstore in Amsterdam, where he was, uh, where, which is the same bookstore where Anne Frank's father actually purchased the, her diary that she used. And he was looking for some fountain pen ink, and the lady behind the counter showed him their selection. And mixed in with a bunch of quink cartridges was a box of uh, Parker Penman Mocha cartridges, which was uh, an ink that was discontinued almost 20 years ago. Uh, and he bought the ink, and he actually sent along a cartridge to me. So uh, I'll have to check this out. So thank you very much, Daniel. I look forward to uh, trying out this ink. Let's see here. Then we have a, uh, a nice letter from Anne in Cincinnati. Uh, she provided me a list of her currently inked pens. It looks like she's uh, fond of a lot of fines and extra fine pens. Uh, then I have a, a letter from Tony in Kansas City. I just love Tony's handwriting. Uh, that uh, I just think that's kind of cool to receive a letter like this. Uh, and that in the note, uh, Tony said that he had uh, recently purchased an ASC Bologna Arco. Uh, and so uh, I think he's received it by now. And Tony, I hope that you have your pen and you're enjoying it. I really enjoy mine. It's a fantastic pen. Uh, oh, here's another letter from Australia. I'm getting a lot of letters from Australia and, uh, and New Zealand lately. Uh, and this one is from Anthony. And he wrote this one with his Lamy 1.5 Italic with uh, J. Herban Blue Ocean. Uh, it's tough to see the shimmer in here, but it's there. Uh, let's see here. Then, oh, here we had a letter from uh, Adrienne, who is from the UK. Uh, and that uh, she said that she is fan, big fans of myself and Stephen Brown uh, and Matt Armstrong and Brian Goulet. And she doesn't know who to blame for her for purchasing three classic pen LB5s. So uh, I tell you what, I'll take the blame for one. We can split the, uh, spread the blame around between all of us. So, okay. How about some uh, rapid fire postcards um, from Amy? Here is a nice Bigfoot. Then we have from uh, Travis. This is actually a close up picture of a fortune cookie. Uh, then uh, this is one from Ryan, a, some kind of rat like creature. Uh, this one is from uh, Bill. This is actually the same Bill that gave me the Bigfoot coin. So Bill. And then uh, this is one more from Ryan, which is a white dog that he said uh, reminded him of Jenny, my dog. So uh, I haven't shown Jenny in a while. She's actually 10 months old uh, and she was getting a little shaggy. So we took her in for a haircut. Uh, so this is what she uh, looked like before the haircut. And this is what we ended up with. Uh, it, it's like I have a new puppy. I, I hardly recognize her, but she's still Jenny. Uh, let's see. Oh, finally, I received a, uh, a nice letter from Jason, who is uh, also known as Waski Squirrel, um, uh, who does his own pen reviews uh, on YouTube. Um, real nice letter from Jason. And what was cool is he sent along uh, some pictures. Uh, he lives in North Dakota, and it's just really picturesque around there. Uh, that This was a picture of uh, his house when it had snowed recently. Uh, he has a garden, and there was a nice little bunny that he captured. 
Uh, and then uh, let's just look at that. This is just his friend's driveway. Uh, imagine having a driveway where you literally can't see another house or another building out, out of your driveway. That uh, I think that would be kind of interesting. Uh, and then finally, check this out. This was my favorite. Uh, this is some clouds over his neighbor's house. And I just think that those clouds are extremely interesting looking and rather ominous looking. So, okay, I think that's enough mail for today. Uh, like I said, I received a bunch of mail, so if you sent me something and I didn't show it, then I will get to it in my next Q&A, but I really appreciate your letters. My P.O. box is near my work, and, uh, you know, there's been times uh, and days that have been rough, like, you know, folks have at work from time to time, and if I swing by the post office to and find a letter, uh, it always brightens my day. So, thanks for your correspondence. Okay. Until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.